So I wanted to introduce our next speaker. Um, our next speaker is Al Alyssa Mendel. She's the clinical um, senior clinical research specialist with the coordination of rare diseases at Stanford. And she um, has been working with Myrie Syndrome Foundation, helping us establish and manage our um, Myrie Syndrome patient registry. So let's welcome Alyssa. My name is Alyssa Mendel, and I am with the CORDS Registry at Stanford Research. I am a research project manager here, um, and today I'm going to share a little bit more about what CORDS stands for and what CORDS does. Uh, but to get us started, so CORDS is a part of Stanford Research, who is actually a part of Stanford Health. We are one of the largest not-for-profit healthcare systems here in North America. And as you can see, this is our Stanford Health footprint. So we are a hospital system by trade. And from that, we have a division called Stanford Research. Um, that's where I work and that's where the CORDS registry lives. So you can see our entire footprint is about the size of Texas. We do have clinics around the region and then also around the world. Um, here's a little bit more about Stanford Health. Um, as you can see, there are clinics over across seas in Germany, China, uh, South Africa. Uh, we cover quite a bit of territory. And then here is Stanford Research. This is the building where I work at. And this is also, again, where the rest of the CORDS team is housed at. And I should say too, we are based here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, with the Stanford Research Organization, we have a few different initiatives where we focus our research. So along with CORDS being a international registry, there's also scientists that are here in our building studying different cancers, diabetes, um, different types of rare conditions as well. Uh, CORDS would fall under the Pediatrics and Rare Diseases Initiative here at Stanford Research. Uh, so we understand in rare diseases, many times patients and family members are the experts. So in order to investigate a disease, researchers need to have a full understanding of a disease's natural history, especially when it comes to the rare diseases, as there are very few people who have these conditions, which means information about rare conditions is very limited. So out of these ideas, Stanford Health uh, has sponsored the development of the CORDS registry. Um, so a patient registry, a lot of you might not be familiar with what a patient registry is. So it's a collection of data uh, capturing specific cohorts of patients. So this can include contact information, demographic information, health information, and quality of life information. Uh, so registries can be patient entered or clinician entered. Uh, CORD serves as a patient-entered database. So a registry can serve also as ways to contact members of a group later on, or it can serve up again to study and to share that story of a natural history. So CORDS is a patient registry for all rare conditions, carriers, and undiagnosed. It ties together patients, advocacy groups, and researchers. Unlike other registries out there, Sanford Health sponsors CORDS. So it is made at no cost to patients, advocacy groups, and researchers. So we are a free service. And a lot of people, uh, they're always very excited when they hear about this uh, because that means the money that foundations raise is able to go into research as opposed to paying for a registry. And CORDS, um, you know, we are able to do this because again, we are an initiative from Sanford Health, the healthcare system. So how does CORDS work? So patients and their families can complete questionnaires. Uh, if CORDS partners with an advocacy group, such as the Myrice Syndrome Foundation, uh, we made a condition-specific questionnaire specific to Myrice Syndrome. This is where participants can go in and 
You can answer questions specific to your condition. Uh, participants enroll in CORDS by completing the questionnaires and keeping their records up to date. Uh, the hope is that researchers will then come through and they will apply for access to CORDS. So that means they could retrieve your de-identifiable data from the questions that you had answered. Here is a brief little um, infographic of what CORDS has done over the past. We've been around for about 10 years now. So our database collectively represents a little over 1,500 rare diseases. Uh, we have partnered with about 80 different advocacy groups from around the world. Uh, we do now have, um, as the See, this is from May. We do actually have over 12,000 participants in the registry. So courts continues to grow and our name continues to get out there. So how can we help you? So many rare diseases do not have a registry. Um, or a lot of times people haven't found their community yet. There isn't an advocacy group out there. Uh, CORDS is going to, again, connect patients' natural history data with researchers and clinicians. You know, a big question that we often get is who is the owners of the data in CORDS? So participants are the primary owners of the data because they get to control how the data is ultimately used. CORDS, we manage and store the data. CORDS will never sell, rent, or lease your personal information. Um, information in CORDS will remain there unless there is consent given by the participant to share that data. So how is CORDS, so how can CORDS data be used? One way is for researchers. They can fill out a researcher application form, which then goes to the CORDS Scientific Advisory Board. They look through the applications to make sure everything is ethical and upon approval, researchers are then able to receive the de-identifiable information that participants have contributed to the registry. This information is coming from the questionnaires that participants would fill out. Again, this is de-identifiable information meaning this is information that will not identify you or give out anything that would identify you. Let's see, patient advocacy groups can also uh, retrieve the data. So this is where maybe the leader of the advocacy group that you belong to, if you gave them permission, they're able to also look through the data and they could you know, share this for educational purposes. Maybe there's grants that they're applying for. Uh, but, but again, only if a participant has given consent, the foundation is able to have that data. And oftentimes too, pharmaceutical companies will come to CORDS looking for people to participate in their clinical trials or their studies. At that point, CORDS would notify the participants that there is a possibility that they could be eligible for a trial. The participant then would get the choice whether or not they wanted to participate in that study. So new discoveries are made based on the information contained in the natural history of a disease. Patients own their stories. So the participants, they are the experts in telling their story. By sharing each story, scientists and doctors can learn more about how to approach rare diseases and treatments for rare conditions. So how to enroll, here is the link if you would like to enroll online. Uh, it just takes you through a quick activation form where you'll put your name, date of birth, and what condition you have. As soon as you log in to your account, you will see this screen here. And this just begins the process of completing your questionnaire. You will want to make sure that you go through the entire questionnaire until you hit the thank you screen. Oftentimes people will stop halfway through uh, with completing their questionnaire and that can lead to not having a full picture of what's going on in the condition. Uh, the other thing too is if you for some reason can't complete all of the questions in one sitting, that's okay. You can come back at any time and your account, your the questionnaire will just start up right where you left off. So again, in order to have the full questionnaire submitted and completed, you will want to make sure you hit that thank you screen. Uh, here is a little snapshot of what your account would look like. There's a few different features in here. Uh, you're able to go to my comparison 
graph and you can compare yourself to uh, some of the responses that other people may have made. Uh, there's also a tab right here where you can upload any documents that you feel are necessary to help share more about your story. So wrapping everything up, Chords is 100% free. It will always be free. Information from the Chords Registry enables scientists to steer their research in the direction of novel discoveries. Patients, advocacy groups, and researchers are all brought to one location to combine their strengths. And again, Chords costs nothing but the time it takes to complete and update your questionnaires. Also, if you ever get a chance, take a second and go listen to our Chords cast. We have interviews with uh, tons of researchers and advocates and patients about their rare conditions. So thank you all again for taking the time to listen and a special thank you to the Myre Syndrome Foundation for having Chords participate. Um, thank you, Alyssa. Is Alyssa still here? Is Alyssa still here for questions? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me oh, okay? Hi, Alyssa. I can. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for, for um, giving us all that great information. We do have a few questions for you. Okay. Um, all right, first up, um, have you had examples of breakthroughs that have come from a registry? Yeah, there's been, you know, a couple different examples. We've had a couple different publications from researchers who took the data and were able to analyze it. That was in a condition called Wiedemann-Steiner syndrome and then 4P minus deletion syndrome. Uh, we've also had our Hypersomnia Foundation. They've been able to have a couple of pharmaceutical companies look through the data, which helped them to start up clinical trials for that condition. I know our another partner of ours, the Wag International Wagner Syndrome Association, they were also able to use some of that data and that just helped them to come up or figure out more centers of excellence throughout the United States. So there's been a few different things that people have been able to utilize data for. That's great. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exciting to know. Um, how many people do we need on a registry for it to be meaningful? You know, that could really vary because the thing with rare conditions is some of them, you know, there might be 50 people in the world, you know, so getting even half of that is phenomenal. But then you've got some rare conditions where you could have a thousand people who have that condition. So there really isn't a specific number, I would say, but the more people who are participating in the registry, the better it's going to be to provide information and to just have that clear understanding of what's going on with the condition. Okay. All right. Um, so someone someone said there are like five Myrie syndromes on the registry. Do we select all of them or one specific one? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so you'd want to select the one that you're diagnosed with, but essentially any of those will have will get mapped to the Myrie syndrome foundation questionnaire. So you'll be fine with whichever one you select. Um, if there ever is a problem with knowing which one to select, you can always send us an email or call cords. Oh, good to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was one more question, I believe. Let's see. Um, what if someone doesn't speak English? How can they register? Yeah, so there's a few different ways here. Uh, so one of them is we do utilize a short form that is in the participants native language. We have quite a few different languages for that short form. Essentially, it is saying to find a trusted translator that will help them walk through that questionnaire. Um, that's kind of the best we could do at this time is they would need to find someone to help them tra or translate that questionnaire to them. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And if like, we have a couple of people who are willing to volunteer that are bilingual. So mm -hmm. if someone wanted to, um, to meet someone that was a bilingual in Spanish and English, they could um, ask us and that would, that would be okay. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That would be totally completely fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause we have someone that speaks French and English that could help someone with French and then someone that speaks Spanish. So if anyone's interested, just get in touch okay. with us. So mm -hmm. let me just make sure that's all the questions that, and we did put up the link to the um, registry website in the chat. And okay, so please clarify if patient submitted data is verified by medical records, et cetera. It's a common dilemma that this type of data is very strong for attitudes and some personal data. However, for some specific problems, the data strength might be less rigorous. What would you say to that? Yeah, so CORDS is all a patient reported registry. So there isn't, we do not do any checks with medical records to see if the data is accurate. Um, but just knowing that it's patient reported, I still think people can tell their stories well. They can also ask a physician to help them to, you know, answer some of the questions. We do encourage that if you want to take your questionnaire to your physician or someone that helps helps you with your condition, you can certainly do that. Um, there also is the ability to upload any medical documents to the registry too. Um, those can be given to researchers or mm -hmm. again, if the participant gives permission to the advocacy group, they can also obtain those too. Okay, all right. Um, I think that's it for today. I really appreciate awesome. it, Alyssa. It's been nice yeah. work. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me.